Hello everyone, I'm a firm believer in patterns. They're very useful, so I made a new one for you. Print it out and cut it out around the outline. Now you're going to need a piece of wood, any wood, but I suggest basswood, as it's easier to carve. You can find the dimensions of my piece in the video description. Place the pattern on wood and let's draw around it with a pencil until you have a nice completed silhouette. Now, as you can see, you won't get any details like the mushroom, the nose and so on. If you really want to transfer them on wood using a pattern, get some carbon paper and place it on wood with a shiny side down. Trace the whole pattern and here you are. You can go over some lines again if they are too faint. This is just one of the options. I will show you how to complete your drawing without any carbon paper. We only have a few things left. Let's restore the outline of the head, first by the ears and then the chin. Then show the arms. And here's the simple mushroom somewhere approximately in the middle of the body. Draw the cap first, then the skirt, did you know it was called skirt by the way, and the stalk. The nose will be somewhere at the center of the head, just show it as a curved line. Now if you have a bandsaw, you can simply remove all the extra wood, but if you don't, don't worry, you can totally carve around with a knife. You would only need to make one cut between the legs. Draw these two parallel lines all the way on the side, trying to make them as straight as you can, you can even use a ruler. I suggest getting a vise and a coping saw, they would be really useful in so many other projects. So I attach my rather rusty vise to the table and then secure the piece of wood there. I use a very simple cheap coping saw, tilt it slightly at an angle so that two cuts would meet in the middle. Usually it doesn't take long and you will do the cut quickly, done. Now let's cover around the outline. I use all the different cuts, for example a V-cut, that appropriately looks like a letter V. And if you are ever in doubt or not very experienced just yet, carve away from yourself, pushing the blade with your thumb. This is the safest way to carve. Alright, we have our basic shape, and here is where our main work begins. The first thing to do is to push the ears more to the back, so that they don't get in the way and allow us some space to work on other features. Make them on the same level, not too far from the face, if anything we can always push them a bit further. Then I will remove the edge, starting to round the face early on. The head cannot be angular or rectangular so it's good to start working on that straight away. At the same time we need to define it with respect to the body. So let's make the chin go above the neck. You can make the slicing cut or a stop cut to help you out. Try to make small cuts, this way you are more in control.
We will go deeper here on the neck, but for now I will continue removing the edge and rounding the head. It's good to do it as we go, as it gives us an understanding of how much we've done and how much else we need to do. And then look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to carve just above the nose. This is how we're going to define it on the face. I'm pushing the blade away in a controlled motion. We can carve off quite a lot there, as the nose is the most prominent feature, so it protrudes quite a lot. And then I start doing a sweeping motion with my wrist. I go in and then come out closer to the surface. This way we will make the distinction gradual and smooth. I do it all around the nose, towards the ears too, on the sides I am using just the tip of the knife. Carve very slowly and carefully there, as the grain is rather fragile in these places. And of course keep your knife sharp. If you feel that the ears are too close to the surface, you can push them to the back a bit more. The distinction between the face and the ears should also be gradual, so I keep smoothing it too. Now the nose area is quite large at the moment, I'll show you a different bear. We can try to achieve this kind of nose, although of course you can modify it the way you want and make it smaller or bigger. I will make it a bit smaller, so I continue carving around, deepening the area and slowly reducing its size. But before we get too carried away, let's work on the body as well, as everything needs to exist in harmony. I deepen the neck area a bit and then move to the arms, separating them along the pencil lines. You can make V-cuts there or slicing cuts and carve some wood off the arms. They are going to be on a slightly lower level than the body. I will also remove the hard edge, making sure that the pores are nice and rounded. And this is fair for any edge, really. Then I do the same on the other arm.
Okay, we're coming close to the mushroom, so it makes sense to define it right there. Go round the drawing with the tip of the knife, positioning your thumb firmly so that it doesn't slip. This cut will help us to preserve the mushroom, so when I start carving around it, it will stay. I still use just the tip of the knife though and undercut slowly and carefully. Give the mushroom some thickness so that it's visible above the surface. Now you can carve around it, shaping the rest of the body. But let's move to the back for a bit, because we have been neglecting this part, and it's so flat for now. Here we would need to define the head and the neck, just like we did at the front. And you can start working on the shoulders too. And same as at the front, we establish the arms. Now the head is too flat at the back, so we're going to carve off the edges. Ears are going to be much thinner, so you can start showing them too. Don't make them too thin just yet though, as we don't know their exact position at the moment. And we are going to determine the position of the ears when we are done with the face. I carve the nose a bit more until I'm satisfied with it. I won't make it any bigger, so I can easily finish the ears from the back.
Also, you might find that the back of the head is a bit too big, so let's reduce it. Ok, the head is less bulky, but the body is still enormous, especially the arms. Also, we can give him a bit more of a neck and chest area, so that he doesn't look very flat and the nose is more prominent. Ok, every bear needs a butt, so start carving his legs with a sweeping motion, like the one we used when carving a nose. Here it is much better, the arms are still a bit too thick, so I continue reducing them and removing the edges. Same here, no sharp edges, from all sides of the legs, even where we did a cut with a saw. Now we need to give our bare feet, draw them with a pencil and then undercut them.
you can go quite deep there. If you look at it from the side, it is sort of slanting under the angle. His belly is thicker than his legs, so we can show that even though the legs are quite short. Let's do it from the back too. Logically, his bum is going to be a bit more protruding, more than his legs. So let's do that sweeping motion again, making his feet narrower. Don't carve too much of the bum area itself, because we're going to need it when we carve a tail. Okay, we need to work on our mushroom a bit more. You could leave it rather flat, but I prefer to make it more prominent and sticking out. So I go over it from different directions and then it leads me to working on the legs a bit more. I will also get rid of the sharp corners there and also soften the cut between the legs. I will try to round it from all sides. Luckily it's quite a small cut. If he had longer legs, it would be trickier. That's why it's quite convenient to make caricature creations. We've done the hard part, now let's work on details. Our bear needs a face, so let's refine it. I will make the nose area a bit more rounded, and also I will undercut it underneath, so that there is a distinction between the face and the body. Now let's draw the nose itself, it can be smaller or bigger, it's up to you. I'm drawing a kind of a medium size oval shape. Then I take my knife and go around it with a tip. Same as with a mushroom, we create definition by carving around it, this way it will stand out. Another detail, mushroom's cap can go closer to the body, this way it will look more three-dimensional, 
rather than just being flat. Also, we will show other parts of the mushroom, so let's separate the cap from the skirt and the skirt from the stalk. If you see that your mushroom has become too thin, you can always add to it by carving around it. Ok, great, bears have tails, so let's add one here. I draw a simple round shape, it doesn't have to be super realistic. After all, we are making a cute little teddy and he deserves a cute tail. It's the same drill as before, we carve around it until the tail is unmistakably above the surface. You can work on the back if it's too uneven after all your carving. The feet have some knife marks, so I'm going to clean them up a bit. Just a few little things left, the ears, I will show it on a different bear, because I think the footage was better there. I start carving from behind, this way the ears will be leaning forward slightly and look more animated. Be very careful there of course, as this is a fragile part of our carving. I will carve off the corners too, making sure that the ears look like nice semicircles. Now we're going to hollow out the ears at the front. You can do it with a small gouge if you have one, but I will show you how to do it with a knife, if that's your only tool. You might need to do a few cuts before taking out wood there, as it's quite an awkward and small place, so make sure that your knife is sharp. You can make it deeper if you are feeling adventurous, just know when to stop so that you don't destroy them accidentally. I turn my work around and do the cuts from both sides until it comes out, leaving a nice ear that has some depth. I did the second ear, then you can work on rounding them a bit more, removing the corners and cleaning them up a little. This is what they look like on my original bear. If you see some stubborn fuzzies there, you can clean them up with a piece of sandpaper. While I have my second bear, I will show you a cool simple variation. If you don't want to carve a mushroom, you can do a heart. I drew it with a pencil first, and then I went around the pencil line with a knife as usual. This time, however, I am not going to carve around the shape and essentially make a relief. Instead, I will carve it out. So, you will carve from within rather than outside.
And here it is, nice and simple. We are almost done. The very last thing to do is a mouth. He needs it to eat honey. Now you can give him a happy mouth or a more concerned mouth, that's up to you. I'm going to give him a slight smile. And then you can simply carve these lines out, creating a groove. You could do that with a V tool if you wanted, but I'm doing everything with a knife today. And here they are, two little bears. Now you could sand your bear. This is what I did with one of them, just to see which version I liked better. And I definitely prefer the bear that I didn't sand, so with a natural knife finish. It feels more endearing. Of course this is up to you, this is just my personal preference. It can also depend on the type of wood you are using. Now let's paint them. For the body I normally use two colors, golden brown and burnt sienna. I dilute my paints with water and then I start with golden brown around the nose area. While the paint is still wet, I add my burnt sienna on the rest of the head, mixing them together. After that you can keep varying these two colors on the body, making some places lighter, for example his belly. If your paint is too translucent because of the water, you can always add another layer, especially around the neck area, because this is where the shadow is supposed to be. Now let's take some black paint for his cute nose. Some red for the mushroom cap. Take a small brush and paint while leaving a few circles for the white dots. Another little detail is a sort of spot of light on his nose, it will make it look more alive. Now the eyes. I drew them with a pencil at first, because it's so easy to make a mistake there and make them asymmetrical. And then with a small brush and dark paint I make them permanent. Same as with the nose, I add some catch lights as soon as they are dry. This will immediately add some expression. And if you carved a bear with a heart, then you can of course just paint it red. Another thing, you can paint that mouth line with some dark brown. And that's it with painting, I promise we are all done. Our cute bears are ready for some adventures. The only last thing that you could do is apply some beeswax on them for further protection. Also, it normally brings out the colors, making them pop and look brighter. So this is our little mushroom bear, I hope you will carve your own.